Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thought I'd take a few minutes this afternoon and uh, talk to you a little bit about some things you're going to see in the, in the next few weeks as we have a midterm election coming up. And because I do, I know that I do tend to ramble somewhat, uh, I wrote down some notes and bullet points. Hopefully that'll keep me on track as I talk about this. Uh, so, I'm, I mean, not that this makes any difference, but yes, I do have a political science degree. Yeah, that was damn near 30 years ago. So, probably doesn't mean much anymore, but, you know, like most of y'all, I, I can observe, I can see things. And really, the only thing that the political science degree is gives, gives me some context in that I understand that most people uh, don't really pay that much attention to politics until it gets close to election season. And even then, most people tend to be fairly apathetic about it, which, yeah, well, that's a subject for a whole other video. But, but keep that in mind because I'm going to talk to you about something called retail politics. Uh... And that's kind of an umbrella term for uh, what you will see campaigns do as it gets closer and closer to election season because they do things like, you'll hear it called like uh, a voter registration drive, which by and large those are uh, most of the time voter registration is fairly apolitical, nonpartisan. But then you have voter education events, which usually are partisan, and then you have just get out the vote activities, which sometimes are nonpartisan, but a lot of times, no, there is definitely, when I talk about what they do in the, in the get out the vote, you, you'll get what I'm, under, uh, you'll get my meaning. And what I'm going to say is the Democrat Party is much better at retail politics than the Republican Party is. Always have been. It's just the way it is. So get into a little bit more detail. Uh, First of all, this kind of politics, you know, getting getting people out on the ground in the streets, knocking doors, handing out flyers, uh, this sort of thing, it is manpower intensive and it is uh, and it's money intensive. Uh, of course, you know, a lot of the manpower in this situation are volunteers or interns, uh, but it it this kind of uh, it, it these operations are not cheap to run. Uh, a lot of times, actually most of the time, these type of efforts are, uh, are done by a third party that is not affiliated with any specific candidate, uh, that isn't, uh, isn't affiliated with a specific candidate or party apparatus, but they are aligned, uh, and Typically, a lot of times, they don't even address a candidate. It's when they engage in these efforts. It a lot. It's a lot of times it's targeted at single issue voters. You know, voters that only care about X or Y. You know, and they'll support any candidate that supports X or Y or whatever. Uh, a lot of times they're targeted at these efforts are low, are targeted in low income areas or area or or at populations that don't have a lot of mobility uh for example uh there's a phenomenon called uh, vote harvesting which is legal most places and what you do is you have an or uh, how that works an organization will come in to say an assisted living facility where the residents there can't, aren't easily mobile or can't really get out or whatever. So they'll bring in, you know, the forms for, uh, to apply for absentee ballots or mail-in ballots. And then uh, when those ballots come in, they, well, depends on, various state to state jurisdiction jurisdiction. I mean, there are even places where these people are allowed to assist 
people in marking the ballots, actually marking the ballots. Well, anyway, and then they collect them up, turn them in. I mean, that's, but if, but if you have an absentee balloting scheme that is much more restrictive, that requires, say, like, I don't know, reasons you might vote absentee, you're in the military, you're overseas, or, out, or stationed out of state, you just can't get back home. Uh, anytime I voted absentee when I was on active duty in the military, I always had to send, uh, I, I had to send, to get my absentee ballot, I had to send an affidavit back to my local election office, you know, stating that I was in the military along with a copy of my orders, my permanent change of, my permanent change of station orders to sign me where I was. Whether that's still required everywhere, I don't think it is, but Anyway, that was a pretty rigorous regime for getting an absentee ballot. When when that's loosened up, it makes these sort of ballot harvesting uh, operations uh, a little bit more difficult. Uh, you know, get out the vote, the get out the vote. You know, election day. You know, some uh, you know some of these organizations will go as far as they'll rent vans. And go into uh, low income, uh, go into low low income areas, and you know load up people, take them to the polls. Nothing wrong with that. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, but but that's that's the kind of thing that that uh, Democrat Party and Democrat Party aligned organizations. A lot of that donation money goes right into that sort of retail politic operations, and they win a lot of elections doing that. And that's why, and that's why, by and large, they oppose any type of election integrity measures or ballot integrity measures. Uh, photo ID. I mean, it's a you know, it's a heck of a lot easier to uh, you know get a ballot. You know, you come in on election day. If you don't have to produce a photo ID, uh, you know, loose voter registration regime, anytime you try to tighten up voter registration regimes or even clean up voter registration rolls, they scream voter suppression, voter suppression. No, it's not. It's just making sure everything's right. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, you, know, you know, people live in these, you know, you know, they don't have cars to get to the voting place, so if they don't have cars, why would they have a driver's license? You know, they'll they'll make those kind of arguments and to explain why why voter ID laws are racist or immoral or whatever. It's not, it's just election it's it's a voting integrity measure. Uh but anyway, those types of measures makes what they do with their retail politics their ground game. It makes it more. It makes it harder to do. It makes it more expensive, and that's why they don't like it. Uh, yeah. So, uh, well, if you disagree with me, let me know. If you agree with me, let me know. But that's that's kind of how I see it. Uh, Y'all have a great evening. I'll talk to you later. Bye.